Now, how does a boiler know if it has water in it or not? Well, they can use these kind of things. So this is a low water pressure transducer or sensor, and this is a low water pressure switch. And in this video, we're gonna find out exactly how they work and how to test them. So, let's get on with it and find out first how the low water pressure transducer sensor works. Now, as you can see, there are three wires coming off this transducer. I've just called them red, blue and orange. They can be any colour. The colours on this glowworm are white, orange and purple. So you need to check with the manufacturers or look in the manufacturer's instructions to find out which one is bringing power from the main PCB in voltage DC and which one is taking power back to the main PCB in voltage DC. So as you can see, I've got a red one bringing power in and the orange one going back. And then the blue one is like a neutral earth wire to make it work. So if we were checking at the main PCB, if we checked between our red and blue wires, we would get five volts DC. Now, depending on the pressure in the system will depend on what voltage DC we get back coming down the orange wire. So if we had one volt DC coming back from the orange wire between the orange and blue, that would be around one bar. If we have 2 volts DC coming back, then it's around 2 bar. And if we have 3 volts DC coming back, it would be around 3 bar. And if it got 5 volts DC coming back, then it's knackered. <laughs> but that's a rough estimate and it's slightly different for different boilers. But that's round about what it is. So, how does it work? Now, if we did a cut through section, we'll see there is a little diaphragm with a magnet attached to it. There is a PCB and then a tiny little spring. So as the water comes through the hole in the center, it pushes the diaphragm up. So if there's no water, the diaphragm is level, the magnet is down at the bottom of the little PCB inside it and it's less than 0.5 volts, the boiler knows there's no water in there. So as you put the water in there, the magnet will rise up, move up the PCB, and if we've got less than three bar, but more than 0.5 bar, or volts DC, then the boiler will run normally. But if the pressure goes over three bar then the boiler will turn off because it will be getting three volts DC back down the orange and it'll know there's a problem and also your pressure relief valve will activate and then this will put it down into a fault and stop the boiler working and won't work again until you press the reset button once you've put the water in there. Now, the transducer can also do another job, which is the pump proving. So, when the boiler turns the pump on first to see whether the pump seized or there's any water in the system, it will move this little diaphragm by about 0.2 bar, and it'll know it's sending five volts DC. It gets about 0.2 volts coming back or a change, it knows there's water in the system and it knows the uh, pump is working correctly. Now guys, this is incredibly important, so listen up. When you're testing the low water pressure sensor on something like this Ideal Vogue, the only way you can test the actual sensor is with live power going to the boiler and the boiler actually in operation. So, you can't carry out safe isolation on this. You've got to be incredibly careful to keep your pinkies away from the board because you're going to have to test this live and this is incredibly dangerous. Now, 
I don't really want to be showing you this, but it's the only way I can show you to test it. If you're not gas safe registered, you're not qualified on boilers, remember you cannot do this even if you're an electrician. Please, please be incredibly careful if you're trying to do this test. You have been warned. Now I've checked the manufacturer's instructions. Our orange wire goes to number 11 and that brings our voltage DC back to the board. Our black, which goes to number 7, is our neutral earth wire. And the power coming from the board is in the red wire on number 6. Now I've got my multimeter set at 20 volts DC. Now I've exposed the board. First wire I'm going to go on to is the black wire. And then I'm going to test up the red wire. So that is our voltage going out. We should have 5 volts DC, which we have. So that's a good start. Next, I'm going to go back onto the black wire again, but this time onto the orange. And this is our power coming back. And we've got 0 0.9 volts DC. So that's working correctly. So that's how the uh, low water pressure sensor transducer works. Let's have a look at the switch now. Now let's take a look at this low water pressure switch on this ideal boiler. Now this is out of one of the old ones so I'll show you this one first. Now I've got my multimeter set up to ohms, 200 ohms. So if I touch these together we're getting a buzzing. Now, it's reading 1 on the screen, yours might read OL. So if I go on to a pressure switch what isn't in the water and got no pressure in it, it's still reading 1. So there is nothing coming in or going out. But if you go on to the two connectors and you do actually get a reading, that means this is stuck in the closed position. So the boiler thinks there's water in there, and there actually isn't. Now, obviously the power's off on this boiler. If I remove these two cables and do the same thing on here, we should get less than one home. There you go, we're getting a reading because the pressure is making the contact. And we're reading not 0.7 ohms. So that is telling the boiler that there's water in there. Let's see what pressure's in it. Should be, should be around one bar. And it is just over one bar. Now that's how these two little devices work and how you test them. Hopefully you've liked this video. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.